Nice to meet you. Okay. Uh, thank you for coming to my talk. I'm happy to giving a talk at PyCon Korea 2023. I'm Takano Suzuki. Annyeonghaseyo. My talk title is Introduction to Structural Pattern Matching. Um, wait a moment. Are? Oh, 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 oh my gosh. Sorry, wait a moment, please. Uh, this is the agenda of this talk. First, I talk about motivation and goal of, of structural pattern matching and this talk. And second, I will introduce what's new on Python 3.10. And next, I, I will explain the syntax of structural pattern matching. At last, I will describe several patterns on uh, several patterns on structural pattern matchings with code. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Wait a moment. I can't see the my my script. Sorry. Why? Why? Mm. Okay. Uh, uh, this presentation uh, is photo is welcome and tweet X something or some SNS. Please share my talk and photo. Welcome. And please contact me. I'm Takanori. Uh, wait a moment, please. Sorry. Mm, why? Why can't see? Please try to closing and reopen. Uh, wait a moment, please. Sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah, it is my PC side problem. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Wait a moment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Why well, can't see? Okay. Ah, this slide is only uh, I. I already uploaded, uploaded my site, slidestakanori.net. Please, if you want this slide, uh, you can see the uh, PC. Please check the slidestakanori.net and click this here, uh, click here, slides. Uh, slides and... Okay, uh, before the main topic, I will introduce myself. My name is Suzu Takanori Suzuki, Suzuki Takanori. But <laughs> looking for my hiragana character is a funny font <laughs> for me. Yeah, and I'm a PyCon JP Association chairperson, and I'm a director and a Python climber on Be Proud Inc. Be Proud Inc. conference name. And I'm a, a several Python related community in Japan. Uh, okay. And, uh, okay. And my memory of Korea is attending PyCon APAC seven years ago. It is a present memory for me. Long time no see, Korean Pythonistas. Long time no see. <laughs> By the way, uh, do you know about this year's PyCon APAC? Do you know? No? And 
this year's PyCon APAC as a uh, will be held in Japan. I hope to see you again in PyCon APAC in Tokyo, Japan. And let's go have a beer, nice beer. Okay, now back to the main topic. Uh, there are not a lot of new features in Python 3.10. I think structural pattern matching looks pretty useful. I want you all to know about, about structural pattern matching and use it. Goal of this talk, uh, you will run the syntax and the basic, basic usage of structural pattern matching. And you will learn about the various pattern mat patterns and how to use patterns. Then you'll be able to try structural pattern matching tomorrow or today. Uh, Prerequisite, this talk is for intermediate level. Uh, you should have a basic understanding of Python syntax. For example, tuple, list, dict, and if statements, define functions, and is instance, data classes, type hinting, and more. Uh, first, I have questions. Are you using Python 3.10 or higher? 20, oh. Oh, oh, thank you, 60%. Okay. And ne next question. Do you know the new features in Python 3.10? New features. One, <laughs> two, thank you, three, okay. Now, let me introduce to the new features of Python 3.10. Uh, this is a Docs Python org page. The new features are summarized uh, in the What's New page in the Python official documentation. And Python 3.10 was released on October 2021. The latest maintenance version is 3.10.11. And 3.10 has uh, many new features. By the way, who are you? This snake image is Python 3.10 release logo. You can find the new features around this snake. Five new features. And there are, there are five new features, five new features written in the logo. Parent size context managers, better typing syntax, better error messages, structural pattern matching, better debugging. In this talk, I will talk about structural pattern matching, okay? Okay, structural pattern matching. Uh, I told about pips for structural pattern matching. Because of a large function of structural pattern matching, it is divided into three pips, specification, motivation, and rational, and tutorial. If you are interested to structure pattern matching, please read these pips, so long pips. And motivation of structural pattern matching, not this talk, structural pattern matching is motivation. The author of pip write in the, this pip, structural pattern matching syntax is found in many languages from Haskell uh, from Haskell, Arang, and Scala to Elixir and Ruby. A proposal for JavaScript is also under consideration. And look at this code. Uh, the, the if, elif, else idiom is often used to check type or shape of an object. Is instance or uh, something, dict in keys or rain, or has ATTR or something. Then, if use match statements to write more elegantly, this is the motivation for structural pattern matching. Now, 
that you have figured out the motivation of structural pattern matching. Let's talk about syntax of structural pattern matching. This is generic uh, syntax of uh, structural pattern matching. A match statement takes an expression. This is subject. And compares its value to succeed patterns given as one or more case blocks. This is generic syntax. And soft keywords. Soft keywords is new in Python 3.10. Uh, match, case, and underscore is soft keywords. Soft keywords can, can be used to identify your names. For example, match can use a variable name, but class can't use, cannot use variable name because class is keyword, but match is soft keyword. Next, let's talk about patterns, main content of this talk. Patterns. From here, I will explain the various patterns in structural pattern matching. This is a syntax I introduced before. You can specify various patterns after case keyword. Uh, pattern one, pattern two, pattern three, more row. First, retailer patterns. Retailer patterns are the simplest patterns. If, if the value of beer style is personal, then third line will be executed. Then result is first drink. If the value of beer style is L, it L, it will not match any pattern. In this case, it will match underscore. Underscore is wildcard pattern. Then result is I like most beers. Or pattern. Uh, the vertical bar is OR. This pattern matches the sports line, matches IPA or session IPA. It's a beer style is IPA or session IPA, match line four, then result is I like it. Make sense? When I commented out the last wildcard pattern. Uh, if the value doesn't match any of the patterns, nothing will happen. In this case, the beer, beer style value is L, then a uh, result variable is not defined. Is it useful? You don't think so? If we write as an if, state, if statement, when I rewrite the code with if statement, it looks similar to match uh, structural pattern matching. You're right, you're right. But pattern matching is much more powerful if statements. I will introduce more useful patterns. Next. Retailer and variable patterns. Let's consider a function receives order tuples, order tuple about beer and food. First, first uh, item is beer, second item is food. And if my order is empty, empty, it matches the third line pattern. The return value is, please order something. Order is empty, empty. Then, please order something. Next. Uh, if the order is IPA and empty, it matches the five, fifth, fifth line pattern. Then the first value of the tuple is IPA, 
the IPA assigned to the beer variable. This is cap capturing or bus variable patterns. The return value is I drink IPA. Next, if the order, the order is IPA and nuts tuple, it matches the ninth line patterns. Then IPA assigned to the beer variable and nuts assigned to food variable. So return, return value is I drink IPA with nuts. And if the order is IPA nuts spam, three items in tuple, it matches wildcard pattern. Because the, the length of the tuple to be matched is only two. So return value is one beer or, and one food only. Do you understand? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, let's write this code with an if statement. I think the code is a little confusing. Don't you think? Which code do you prefer? Pattern matching or if statement? Still not sure. Okay. I will introduce other patterns as well. Uh, there is one note for pattern matching. The order of the case is important. This order means not peer order, case order. And the, uh, the patterns are compared in order from top to bottom. So if you write called like, like this. It will only match the first pattern. When I send order is empty and nuts, but uh, this code uh, uh, match, match in the third rank pattern. As a result, it does not, uh, as a result, uh, I, the result is I drink empty with nuts. It's not good for me. Uh, as a result, it does not match any other patterns. Uh, fifth line and seventh line and ninth line. Okay. This is uh, important, the order, the order of the of cases. Next, crosses, crosses patterns. Here I create order data class. The, the order data class has a beer attribute and a food attribute. The first case matches when the beer and the food are empty. The second case matches if only beer has a value. And the third case matches if food has a value. The both Beer and food have a value, it matches in the fourth cases. It is easy to read, I think. Do you think? This is a, a result of this function. It works in the same way as the previous tuple case. It is useful for me. And let's rewrite classes pattern with if statements. This is a match case and rewrite it if statement code. I will the I will write the code. It looks a little complex for me. And classes patterns are much more powerful. There was uh, there are three classes representing order of beer and food and water. Each class has an attribute. Beer class have a style and size. 
food, food name, and the number of glasses of water. The code written in three classes with classes pattern. It is easy to read because each class type has a different matching case. Beer order and food order and water, uh, water order. I write the code, this code with if statements. I think pattern matching is cleaner and readable than if statements. This is if statements pattern and multiple classes class pattern with uh, in structure pattern matching. Which do you like? I like this multiple classes pattern. Okay. Next pattern, sequence patterns. Okay. In this case, I'll pass the order text. For example, beer, IPA, pint, or food, nuts, and water, three, and beer. This code can match the pattern of multiple sequence, synthesis. In this case, it matches list or tuple of length one, two, or three. When the order text is built, match first, first pattern. And the order text is food, nuts, or water three, match second pattern. And beer, IPA pint, order, Match the third pattern. Also, if you write the pattern like this, any value in the list will be matched with a specific string beer, food, water, beer. This is a combination of sequence patterns and literal patterns. It is useful. And uh, if the only size of the beer is pint or half pint, for example, beer IPA small is invalid order. Using the OR pattern in this way, you can match only pint or half pint. In this way means uh, Bia style and uh, parentheses in the pint, but curve half pint. This is or pattern and sequence pattern and retail pattern. But I don't know beer size. Pint or five pint, but which size? In this case, use as pattern. If I write as size after the pint, half pint, be a size assigned to the size variable. This is as pattern. Then I can read, I can know uh, be a size. Next, uh, matching multiple values. I want to order several food items at once. For example, food, nuts, and fries, and pizza. But only one food item can be ordered in this sequence pattern. Food and food is a single, only single, single food. In this case, the star is prefixed to the variable, food to star foods. Then multiple values are assigned to a variable as a tuple. In this case, I send, I order food, nuts, fries, pizza, then foods into nuts, fries, pizza, tuple.
mapping patterns. Last pattern is mapping patterns. Oh, sorry. Now, I can order multiple food items at once. Yeah. And mapping patterns. The pattern is matched by map types such as dictionaries. Mapping patterns are useful for analyzing a JSON loaded dictionary, I think. The order is a beer, IPA, and size and pint. Then match the second case and get the, then get the style and the size. It is readable for me. And you can use uh, built-in classes for matching. Uh, use a STL, an into, or something. In this case, food and beer style are storing. STL food, STL style. And the number of water is an integer. Integer only, int kako number. If the value of water is string, it will not match the pattern. If uh, the order dicto is water three, three in, int three is match, but if the order dicto is water and string three doesn't match, then uh, that doesn't match in this match, uh, match case pattern. Okay. Finally, uh, I will introduce about GAS. GAS are not pattern. GAS are the condition to patterns. I will do limit number of water orders. You cannot order more than nine glasses of water at a time. Also, you cannot order zero or negative numbers, valid numbers of glasses of water, one, two, three, one, two, eight only. In this case, use gas. When you write if statements after the pattern, it becomes a guard. Line five, matches if the second value in the order list is an integer number. But because of the GUT, if number is between one and eight, it matches this case. Okay. Can't order many glasses of water with gas. I want uh, 100 water. Okay. Summary of this talk. I told about motivation and goal of this talk and what's new in Python 3.10 and new features. And I told about syntax of uh, structure pattern matching and soft keywords, match case and underscore. And I explain several patterns, literal, variable, classes, sequence, mapping, wildcard, or, as, and gas. If you think pattern matching looks good, please try, please try it out. This is a references for structural pattern matching. Thank you for your attention. And I look forward to seeing you at PyCon APAC in Tokyo, Japan. Thank you.